Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well with the whole quarantine thing we've got going on right now. And school's been canceled, and sports are canceled, and church is canceled, other than doing things online. And so that's what we wanted to do for you here today, um, is kind of put together a little Sunday school type thing for you. And um, just kind of walk through the crucifixion and the resurrection. And um, I'm going to be showing some different pictures and things like that just to kind of give you an idea of what things were like. But also keep in mind, this, this isn't actually the same. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And we'll read from the Bible and we'll, we'll try to grow closer to the Lord through this whole thing and through seeing this. And I and, uh, encourage you to share it with your friends. Show Maybe have your parents watch it with you or a grandparent or something like that. But uh, hopefully it's enjoyable for you. The Romans were very good at what they did, and they had good weapons and sharp swords. They were masters of crucifixion. But the real question is, yes, they put Jesus on the cross. They were the ones that did the crucifixion, those Roman soldiers under the direction of Pilate. But why? Why did Jesus Christ have to die? Because we all know that if he wanted to, he could have stopped everything right there. He could have wiped out everything and started everything over, but he didn't do that. So why did he die? He died because we are sinners. You see, Adam and Eve in the garden had one rule, don't eat the fruit. And it probably wasn't a cantaloupe, maybe it was an apple, maybe it was a grape, maybe it was a plum. I don't know what it was, but it was fruit. And God said, don't eat of that fruit. And they did it anyways. They sinned against God. And that sin nature has been passed down through all of us, through all of time, through every man, until this point right here with you and I. And we're we're both sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Lord needed a lamb. Brought Miss Becca in um, to help us here. But so the reason why that Jesus Christ had to die is because God was looking for that perfect lamb. Right? The Bible says we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the vain conversation received from tradition of our fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, this isn't a lamb, but it is a chicken. And we just got baby chickens the other day, and they are a lot of fun. They're always running around and acting crazy. But the problem was is that no human was perfect. And if we look at this chicken and we look him over, we can find a blemish. Looks like he's got something going on with his beak up here. And so he wouldn't be perfect, right? And none of us are perfect. The Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Jesus Christ had to die. He had to be the sacrifice for you and I because I'm not good enough on my own and you're not good enough on your own. None of us can pay the price for our sin, right? The Bible says that, um, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus Christ had to die. So the scene unfolded and there they were. And Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples betrayed Jesus for some silver. And yeah, it's shiny and it's pretty. And they gave him 30 pieces of it. But at the end of the day, he betrayed the God of the universe for 30 pieces of silver. And then Jesus was taken by, by those men and by those soldiers and he was taken and he was brought before Pilate. And Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. They were looking and people tried to come and accuse him of things, but the, at the end of the day, no one's stories lined up and, and they didn't have any evidence at all to put Jesus Christ on the cross, but the people wanted him to die. And the priest says, let his blood be upon us and upon our children, meaning they wanted to take responsibility for that. Well, so Pilate couldn't find anything wrong with him. But at the end of the day, he sentenced Jesus Christ to die. You see, then from there, they took Jesus and they did all kinds of terrible things to him. One of the things they did 
was they took rods and they beat it. And these rods were usually flexible. And when you had a soldier behind it, a really strong man, and when they would hit, that would hurt very bad. And you could imagine that if you've ever been hit with a stick by maybe a friend or someone, someone trying to hit you with a stick. <laughs> You know that it hurts, and this was definitely a painful thing. Well then from there, what happened next is they had something called the cat of nine tails, and this is not a cat of nine tails. This is just a normal whip, right? Just a pretend whip, but it kind of gives you the idea that you would not want to be hit by a whip. You would not want that. And so with the cat of nine tails, what they would do is they would take the end of the whip and they would put little pieces of broken pottery on there and little shards of metal and glass and things like that and that way when they would hit you with it it would actually rip the skin off your back and you're saying why in the world would jesus christ go through all of that and the reason why he would go through all of that is for you and me because he knew that he was our only chance and then from there they put on him a crown of thorns So I don't have big thorns, and I know some people might have a tree in their yard or something with big thorns on it, but these are just, this is just a rose bush, right? But you can get the picture that you would not want to have to have this on you like this because it will cut you. It'll scratch you all up. You're going to get cut up by this. And what they did for Jesus is they, they took big branch that had a whole bunch of thorns and things on it and they would they would make it into a crown and so how if this is hurting my hands pretty bad but so they'd make it into a crown and it wouldn't have any of the pretty flowers on it it would just be thorns and they put this down on his head and they actually pushed it down into his head and the blood ran down off of his brow and this is it hurts even just with these little ones scratching me. I couldn't imagine a big thorn getting dug into my head. No one would want that. So, all those terrible things happened to Jesus Christ, and they did all kinds of other terrible things to him as well. They ripped the beard out of his face, which would be extremely painful, and then they would punch him in the face and they would spit on him and all these different things and they would mock him. Someone that's suffering, they were mocking him. And then they put that cross on his shoulder and this isn't any, this is probably half as heavy as that would be. And it, it is, it's, this is about 40 pounds and his was probably about between 80 and 100 pounds. But then they made him carry that. And so as you can imagine, that would be very hard to do in the state that he was in. So they took Jesus and they crucified him. He was between two thieves and they actually nailed him to a cross. I just got these at the store and they were probably different than these nails, but it gives you the idea of a big nail and to go into your hand would be a very painful thing to have this nailed down in there. I see a little blood here from where I was with the thorns, but that would, that would be a whole lot of blood if you had this here. And you could just imagine that soldier taking that nail and just driving it in. And so that hand is pressed underneath there and held up. And they did the same thing with his feet and they used three nails total. But I wanted to read a passage of scripture here that talks about the crucifixion. It says, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe from him and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon the Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him up to the place of, the, of Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. 
And it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the superscription of the accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith he was numbered with the transgressors. And they pass, and they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, and we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him, and the sixth hour was come, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. And then Joseph of Arimathea came and took the body and they placed Jesus Christ in the tomb for what many thought was the end of the story. Yeah, they thought it was over. They did. And they had good reason to. I mean, they just killed a man. And in human history, people didn't come back from this. Right here, all of these people, their friends and loved ones, wish they would come back, but they don't. But something happened in Matthew 28. It says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the woman, fear not ye, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. People didn't come back from this. And the reality is you and I will not come back from this. The Bible says it's appointed unto a man once to die and after this, the judgment. It's coming for us all one day and hopefully it's when we're all nice and old and in a nursing home or something like that. Um, but the reality is, is it, it could be at any time. The Bible says that we're not promised tomorrow. It says, what is, what is life? It is even but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. You see, eternity would be a long time to be wrong. And the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says that if we have the son, then we have not, or the, if we have the son, then we have life. And if we have not the son, then we have not life. And so the question here today, as we think about the crucifixion, we think about the resurrection, which is, which is really the most, it's the most important part because without the resurrection, you and I would not have a place in heaven. The resurrection sealed the deal. Jesus Christ got victory over the grave. He got victory over death. Everyone tried to make sure it didn't happen, but it did. The, the soldiers assigned a guard of people, and that angel said, or those angels came down, and then those soldiers became as dead men. They couldn't keep Jesus Christ down because Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and Jesus Christ made a way for us to go to heaven. But the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. 
So the question is, through all of this, through Easter and through thinking about the crucifixion and thinking about the resurrection is, are you saved? Has there been a time in your life when you called on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your savior? I know it was when I was about 11 years old in my living room at my house. I can remember exactly what was going on. I remember the ugly couches that we had. And I remember praying there with my dad on one night. I got out of bed and I went down and prayed with my dad. And that was the best decision I ever made was putting my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Because without that, an eternity in hell would be waiting for me. That's the reality. And so as we think about all this, the question is, if you died today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? Jesus Christ went through all of this for us. And, and granted, all this stuff I've been showing you is not what it, it's, it's similar, but it's not the same. It was much, much worse for Jesus Christ. These things were really real. And this has just been a way to help, help you to see and help you get a picture of what's going on and maybe what some things were like and help you to think about it and help you to stay with it and not drift off. But so the question is, has there been a time when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you're sitting out here at your house, been quarantined and everything else, and you're saying to yourself, I'm not sure that I'm saved. If you have a parent or a grandma or grandpa that's in church, you can ask them about it. And they can show you from the Bible how to be saved. Or you could call in to Central Baptist Church and we can help you. You could send an email through the website and we can come visit you or give you a phone call and explain it to you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die. So thanks for coming along with us today. Thanks for sticking with us and thanks for watching.